Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be going over the top five sort of myths and misinformations out there surrounding the, uh, the Swedish Jungmann rifle, the AG-42, and its sibling rifle, the Egyptian Hakim. There's a lot of things that people tend to sort of regurgitate and everything, so we're going to tackle those today, and I'm going to go through why a lot of them really aren't that big of a deal. So I'll get to the Jungmann thumb later. The first thing we're going to tackle is this whole thing where people kind of complain about the magazine being hard to remove on the AG-42. Um, so the magazine is purposefully hard to remove. In fact, the Swedes made it harder to remove on their B upgrade in the 50s. So this is an AG-42B and um, it's, you have to very, very intentionally remove the magazine on here. It's not very easy to remove. It's that way on purpose. This is supposed to be a fixed magazine rifle. It's reloaded uh, by stripper clip the magazines aren't meant to be you know, swapped out. People didn't carry spare magazines. The magazine stayed in the gun. The rifles were topped up by strip, stripper clip. So removing it is really not a combat thing. It's not how people are gonna be reloading this or not how they were supposed to be reloading it. Um, same exact thing with the Hakim. So it is a little tricky to, to remove the magazine on the uh, AG-42. Like I said, that's, that's on purpose, or at least the AG-42B. Now I wanted to point this out because I've seen another video where they were basically complaining about how hard it is to remove the magazine on the Hakim. Um, first off, it's not. It's really easy to, uh, to remove it and put it back in. It's probably just somebody's poor example. Um, and the other thing is too, it's not meant to be removed or reloaded by removing the magazine. So it just seems a silly point that people make. So that's just the first thing I wanted to cover. Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about with these is the fact that anytime anyone is trying to like demonstrate how unsafe or how scary, uh, a, you know, a Hakim is or a Jungmann rifle is, always notice they remove the magazine. And there's a reason why they always remove the magazine. And that's because uh, there's sort of two different ways that the bolt on this rifle stay back. They either stay back via the safety or they stay back via the uh, empty magazine hold open. So there's a little detent and spring. Whenever the magazine is empty, it pushes up on the detent and it holds the bolt backwards. So I'll demonstrate that now. This will kind of mimic as if the rifle was fired and uh, you know the last round was fired out of it. You have an empty magazine and you have a gun that's just basically open, it's ready to be reloaded. And it's the same exact thing on the AG-42 Swede. Safety is off, you know, let's say you fired your last round uh, that's that's it. The the bolt is going to be held back by this empty magazine. Okay. Now the thing is, when the bolt is being held back by the empty magazine, you don't necessarily want to go, you know, putting your fingers in there. But it's not scary. It's very easy. They, I mean, when they designed this rifle, they understood that. So then the question would be, how did they expect people to close the bolt when the gun is empty? So say you're at the range or whatever, you're shooting this. How do they expect you to do this? Well, there's a way. What you do is you put the safety on. Now with the safety on, you're gonna push the bolt carrier forward. You're gonna hear a click. So now that click was the bolt carrier engaging and holding the bolt. Now if you wanna make sure that your bolt carrier is holding the bolt, you can kind of jiggle the, the whole sort of bolt and bolt carrier assembly will jiggle back and forth. Jiggle, jiggle. That means the bolt is no longer being held by the empty magazine detent. So you can now, oh my goodness, you can push on the magazine, uh, slide the whole uh, assembly forward. Once the assembly is all the way forward, uh, the back of the little hook that hooks onto the bolt from the, uh, from the bolt carrier here is, um, it's then visible. And all you have to do is press on it. You can let the carrier back and the bolts forward. It's the same exact process on the Hakeem. Safety on, does cover forward. Uh, then you, you know, press the magazine in, push the whole assembly forward. You're going to hold the uh, dust cover uh, or the, you know, the, the bolt carrier. You're going to press the button and then you're going to just let that go backwards. It's, as I think, it sounds scarier than it is. There's not like a ton of spring pressure on this. Um, it's not like, I mean, I'm pushing it forward with one finger. So now the safety is off. The only thing holding this bolt back is that little detent. Now that little detent is meant to hold the bolt back while you're loading the magazine. It's not gonna fly forward while you're loading the magazine, okay? So now at this point, if you actually did, say you topped up the magazine, 
the way you would uh, go about firing this is that you would take this bolt carrier, you press it forward, you're gonna hear a click. Now that click, you might've heard two little clicks there. The first click is the dust cover or the bolt carrier grabbing onto the bolt. The second little click that you might not have heard is a little detent falling down because as the pressure is taken off the bolt going forward into the detent, the detent gets pushed back down. Now, if I put this back, it's going to go forward. And that's the scary part that everybody talks about. It's a big scary sound. And uh, oh man, I'm not sure when such gun people became, you know, such scared of loud sounds, but uh, that's it. And it seems pretty scary, but it's just, it's a common thing on guns that guns go forward when you hit a bolt release, right? If you, if you have an AR-15 and you hit the bolt release, you're not scared if the bolt goes forward. So, but, but on this gun, people are. So it's a, little, it's a little weird. The third thing is the bolt carrier moving whenever you take the safety off, which again, is just a really basic mechanical feature. Uh, let's just get in and do a close up of that. So there's some really simple mechanisms with this rifle. Uh, if we take it apart, you can kind of see here how this works. And I'm gonna show you exactly why this is happening. Uh, so pretty much on this carrier, uh, this is what holds the bolt. So the bolt is gonna slide in here and uh, on the back of the carrier, you're gonna see this little protrusion sticking out. So the way these pieces interact, um, you have this back portion, um, which is what your safety is on. So right now, uh, the safety is on. So this little area uh, is a little bit deeper. If you notice, when I take the safety off, it flicks around and it protrudes a little bit more. Now, the reason why it protrudes when the safety is on because uh, that little piece that sticks out there uh, lines up with this guy. So that is the little hook that is inside of the carrier. Uh, that hook is what hooks into the bolt. So there is a little catch inside of the bolt here on top. And so that little hook hooks into it. Now, Going back to the safety, whenever the safety is off and the uh, carrier goes all the way back, that little hook contacts this little piece that's sticking out just slightly more. And when that contacts and is pressed in, you're gonna see that hook move on the inside here. That hook moves down. So that mo hook moving down is what releases the bolt. Now, if I put this on safe, which is to the right, um, that is now a little bit deeper in there. And you see when I put these together, the hook will not be engaged. So the hook is not moving at all. But watch me flip the safety on holding these together. If I can kind of do it, you'll see this, you'll see that little hook move down. So that's sort of how this mechanism works on the gun. So now the safety's on, we're gonna pretend like we just loaded some rounds in there. We're gonna flick the safety off. The bolt carrier moves forward on purpose as it should. And now all we have to do is uh, push it backward just slightly and it loads the rounds. This is how it's supposed to work. That's why the uh, bolt carrier moves forward. Again, it's a feature, it's not a flaw. So the fourth thing I wanted to cover is the, the broken Jungman rifle that was on TFB TV whenever Alex was on there. Uh, you could see in his run and gun how he, sh he was you know, shooting his gun. And on the last round when it was fired, the, the bolt is still forward, which means that his empty magazine uh, detent is not working. So something is going wrong with his gun. The bolt is not being held back. So every time he was doing that, he was having to flick the safety on and then work the, work the top cover so that the, the bolt was then being you know, held back so that he could load the gun. Uh, that is not the intention of the, the gun. That's not how it was meant to be you know, reloaded. His gun is simply broken. It's got a, a malfunctioning uh, empty magazine system on it. So the little detent's not going up. So that's just sort of his gun being broke and people using that you know, as, a, you know, as like a, this big you know, reason for why the gun's so unsafe. So right here is where that detent uh, would be sticking up, uh, if you can see it right there. Now, if you press the magazine in, uh, that little detent will go down. Uh, of course, when the magazine is empty, the detent pops up, and that is what stops the bolt 
from going forward whenever the magazine is empty. That is a part that you'll want to check in your rifle uh, just to make sure it's there, just to make sure it's working. I, I can pretty much guarantee you that is the piece that was not working in Alex's rifle on TFB TV. Now the fifth thing was pointed out by Miles in his TFB video, and I think it's probably the most valid sort of criticism about the whole uh, system, uh, which is if you get any sort of debris in here or any sort of stoppage, um, which he, he showed by a, um, which kind of looked like, uh, like a stove pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pretend that we got a stove pipe in here. So there we go. That's, uh, that's a pretty, pretty nasty malfunction going on in this Hakeem rifle. And it's a valid sort of criticism that you, you cannot pull this, you cannot get the bolt back by the dust cover, right? So you can push this forward, it just can't go forward enough to engage with it. Uh, that kind of ignores these things. So you can take your fingers and you can very easily uh, place them on the bolt. You can pull the bolt backwards. Uh, in fact, you don't even need anything in there. The, the spring tension on these guns aren't crazy high. Even with this slick bolt, you can grab this, you can grab the bolt and pull it back. There's not, there's not a lot of spring tension on these. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that with the Jungmann in case you didn't believe it. You just really simply, you can grab a hold of the, the bolt I mean, the spring tension on this isn't so crazy strong. Uh, I mean, my fingers are a little, little greasy, uh, a little sweaty, clammy, and I can still get enough uh, friction on this bolt to, uh, to kind of just pull it back just by itself. So, I mean, you could get something in here and you could still reach in and you can clear this with your bare fingers. It's not, again, I think it's probably the most valid criticism I've heard of the rifle, but it's still, it's just, it's not that big of a deal. You can just, you could just reach in, right? I'll go ahead and uh, duplicate sort of a, a stoppage like that. So you got a stove pipe, just, you know, you can just grab it. So there you go. I hope all that rambling maybe helped solidify in your mind a little bit more that this, this rifle design, the EG42 design is not that scary. It's, it's pretty simple once you understand it. And the soldiers that were using it, I'm sure would understand it well enough to not be smashing their thumbs all the time. Maybe like an untrained conscript or a random person grabbing the gun, okay. Which is kind of the mentality that a lot of people who would mess with these or play with these or shoot them once, or maybe just buy them and don't do any research or anything with them would sort of think. But really, it's, it's not, it's a little weird of a design, but it's not crazy, it's not unsafe. It's, it's not gonna hurt you as long as you don't do anything stupid with it. I mean, like I said, keep the magazines in the gun. Make sure the, you know, the empty magazine detent is working and holds the bolt back. I mean, if those two things, you have the magazine in and your detent's working, the gun's gonna be fine. You're not gonna smash your finger. I'd suggest just playing around with the gun a little bit. You know, maybe with dummy cartridges, something like that, get a little bit more familiar. And you're gonna be fine. So thanks again for watching, guys. If you like this sort of thing, let me know. I still have the mustache because in the last video, uh, I think it was 18 voted to keep it, seven voted to shave it. So the keep it's one. I don't know if I'm gonna do another vote or whatever again in the comments, but uh, let me guys know what you think of this video. If you wanna see more stuff like this, a little bit more technical in the future, let me know and uh, I'll see you next time.